Thank you, everybody. Thank you. What a place. Thank you. Thank you. We do love Fort Wayne, right? We love Fort Wayne, right? So we're going to have a little fun. You know, I'm here all day, we, but let's just have, let's do a real long one today, okay? We'll do a real long one. Here's the story. So I did a few statistics, and don't be depressed. It ain't good, but we're going to change it fast, folks. We're going to change it fast. So they go Fort Wayne, and I like Fort Wayne. We have friends from Fort Wayne. Great people, Jim, Sue. Fort Wayne has lost one in four manufacturing jobs since NAFTA. No good. We got to change that around. NAFTA, NAFTA is a real problem, folks. NAFTA. Our brilliant politicians—they made that deal. That was another brilliant deal. And now they're doing TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. Cruz wants it. It's going to be a disaster. Okay, it's a disaster. It'll be worse than NAFTA. The number of people living in poverty in the county, Allen County, has nearly doubled since 2000. We got to take care of that, folks. You know what's happening? Our jobs are going to Mexico. China's taking our business. Japan. Everybody. Not going to happen. The entire state of Indiana has lost one in five manufacturing jobs since Congress put China in the World Trade Organization in 2001. Not good, right? Indiana has lost another 5,000 jobs. State has lost 15 percent of its construction jobs. Steel. Now, steel we love. India is big for steel, right? Don't worry, we're going to be good. One fourth of all steel in the United States was made in Indiana, but steel workers are getting hammered in Indiana because of the dumping. You know the dumping. We're not going to have dumping. We're going to keep our jobs better than dumping. All right, we're keeping our jobs. The car industry is another. Now, the car industry is a big industry in Indiana, but it's being hammered and will be hammered if TPP passes. So we're going to make sure it doesn't pass because that's going to make, I'm telling you, that's going to make NAFTA look like baby stuff. So it's all bad, but look, let me tell you, ultimately it's good because you know what's going to happen? We're going to, we're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back, okay? We're going to bring it back. We're bringing it back. So I'm competing against these two guys, even though they have no path to victory. It's a ridiculous. I don't even know what we're doing. In fact, the Washington Post just recently, it says headline, the time has come to admit that Republican voters want Donald Trump as their nominee and stop all the nonsense. That's in the Washington Post. We have millions of more voters. We have hundreds of more delegates. It's a corrupt system. It's a crooked system, very much like crooked Hillary, right? It's a crooked. It's all a rigged system. For instance, I won in Arizona. I won everything. But these guys are trying to go in and get votes on the second ballot. Jan Brewer, the governor, great woman. She got thrown off. It's all rigged by the, by the professionals. It's all rigged by the bosses, and it's a disgrace. It started in Louisiana. I wasn't supposed to win Louisiana, and I went and I campaigned. I went into an airplane hangar like this, like this incredible. This is a good place. This is a nice place. Look at that. Every single seat, every single corner, the entire floor. We set a new record here. New record. We set a new record, and these guys will never report it. The dishonest media will never report it. They're the worst. They'll never report it. Don't I think of it. Think of it. No matter where we go, we just left, as you know, Terre Haute. Do we like Terre Haute? Yeah, we like Terre Haute, right? We like Terre Haute. We had a new record there. Great people, incredible people. And over here, they've never done this much. You know why? Because they can fill up the seats. But nobody ever fills up the floor. And by the way, there are probably seven or 8,000 people still outside trying to get in. So if you want to leave early, go ahead. We'll let people in. The fire marshal has been great. And this happens all over. This is always the case. We go to Alabama. We have 35,000 people. We can go as big as the arena. 
and we have, no matter where we go, it's a movement that's going on. And you know, it really is. It's a movement toward being smart. Our country is being led by people that have no clue. And the ones that do have a clue, they're totally guided by campaign contributions, by their super PACs, and by companies that want to rip off our country. They don't care. So we're going to get it straight. Now, here's something coming in, because, you know, you look at these guys that I'm running against. Now, they're hanging by their fingernails. They're just like barely hanging on. So they have no road to victory. And Cruz did something that nobody's ever seen before. He has no road to victory. He can't win. He's the first person in the history of the United States who picked a running mate, Carly, who picked a running mate. She picked now. He picked a running mate, even though he has no chance to win. So he picked as a presidential candidate a running mate, but he has no chance to win. So that's the first in the history of our country, folks. Ted, Lion Ted, I want to congratulate you. I'd like to congratulate you, Lion Ted. That's right. Lion Ted. That's how, you know, he walks in with the Bible held high, right? Bible held high. Then he puts it down and then he lies. Oh boy, he lies. He really does lie. You know, I go around, I say I'm against the Obamacare stuff. We're going to repeal it, replace it. We're Second Amendment. We love our Second Amendment. I watch this guy on television. Donald Trump loves Obamacare. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's wonderful. Your rates went up, you know, 35, 45, 55 percent. But they lie, these politicians. I'm in business and they're bad. And I have to tell you, they're much tougher. They're much tougher people. But they don't lie like this. I never saw people lie like this. How about the little deal they made, Kasich and Cruz, where one will get out of Indiana. Now, now think about that, you know, because we all have our staffs. One will get out of Indiana. The other one will take over. You know, the people of Indiana are smart. They don't go for this stuff. Stuff. Got to be very careful, because if I use a little bit language, it's bad. Just a little bit, it ends up being a front page story all over the world, okay? Because of these dishonest people. But they formed this alliance. But just to show you what bad deal makers politicians are, they form an alliance. And by the following morning, I got a call 11.30 in the evening. By the following morning, the alliance was broken. Okay, it was broken. Kasich, Kasich said, no, no, vote for me. That's okay, vote for me. Cruz said, you're not supposed to say that. They're fighting with each other. And it was so bad that he picked Carly because maybe he could stop the bad press. And in the meantime, the great Bobby Knight called me, said, I'd like to endorse you. We love Bobby Knight. I'll tell you, he's fantastic. You know, he called, he called me a year ago. That's right. He called me a year ago, Bobby. And I've known Bobby Knight, you know, not, I didn't know him personally, but who doesn't know Bobby Knight, you know? He's tough, he's smart, and he knows how to win, which our country doesn't know anymore. We don't win. We don't win anymore. We don't win on trade. We don't win with the military. We can't beat ISIS. I said, Bobby, we can't beat ISIS. I know it. I can't. He's going crazy. But by the way, he could beat ISIS in about two days. Okay? And he's never done it before. But he called me a year ago and he said, you know, I hope you run. This was before I announced, I'm, I announced on June 16th. He called me before that because people were speculating. And he said, I hope you really run. And if you run, I'd like to back you. I said, you know, Bobby, it's a little earlier, but I'll let you know. Give me a number. So I give, I take the number, I put it aside. And then I'm running, running, running. We're doing well. Win New Hampshire, win North Carolina, win Nevada, win the South. We went Florida, Big Lit. We won a lot. I guess I won like 28 or 29, close to 30 now. And uh, Lion Ted won like, what, 10 or 11 or something. And we have hundreds of votes more, but more, but you know, we have millions and millions of votes more. We have more delegates by a lot, like 300 or something, maybe more. 
but we have millions of votes more, setting a record in the history of the Republican Party. And within another week, after I think Indiana, we'll have the all-time record and we still have major states to go. So we will have beaten the all-time record. And, you know, you see names like Eisenhower and Nixon and this one and that one. Just, we just beat everybody. And we're 70 percent up, almost more than that, from what it was four years ago, when you should have won. In all fairness, you should have beaten Obama four years ago, in all fairness. Didn't work out. It didn't work out eight years ago. It didn't work out four years ago. And this time I said, let's do it ourselves. Okay, Fox? We'll do it ourselves. So bad. So we're millions of votes up, and in another week we will have set the all-time record in the history of the Republican Party for votes. That's to me. Now, it's a rigged system, a, a terrible, corrupt, and rigged system. It's run by the party leaders so that very capable outsiders can't get into the party. It's run by the special interests, by the lobbyists, so they can continue to make millions of dollars off these characters running for office like Cruz. It's run, it's really, a, it's really a disgusting system. But here's what you do. I deal with a lot of fighters, price fighters, right? I've had a lot of fights over the years. And not so long ago, I had a fighter, Champ. And he wanted to go into really unfriendly territory where the challenger was. I said, Champ, what are you, crazy? He said, you don't want to go there. You could lose. If they have a decision, you're going to lose. He said, you know what, Mr. Trump? If I knock him out and I knock him on his ass and he's unconscious laying on the floor, they can never take it away from me, sir. And you know what he did? In three rounds, he knocked the guy out and he walked with a big paycheck, okay? Bigger than he could have made anywhere else. So that's what we do. We're winning by so much that even though it's a crooked system, even though it's a totally rigged deal, both parties. Now, the Democrats do it, but it's more obvious. Actually, the Republican form of rigging the system is a much more sophisticated form because the superdelegates, they just hand it to Hillary. Okay? I mean, that was too obvious, right? She walks away with all those superdelegates, and Sanders keeps winning, and they keep saying he has no path to victory. I said he's won it like nine times in a row. Now, with us, it's much more sophisticated. With us, they take him away from you. But they can't take away the first round. But believe me, folks, it's a dirty, rotten, horrible business, this politics. It's a rigged, rigged system. Remember it. And the only reason we're doing well and the only reason we're going to get it is because we're winning by so much. If this were fairly close, like I was 25 percent ahead, you would have no chance. And I'm representing you. And I hope you all go to Cleveland. I'm telling you. I hope you all go to Cleveland in July and let's all be heard because we have a movement going on. And by the way, we have a movement, and you know what I'm getting for this movement? I get nothing. I'm self-funding my campaign, okay? I'm self-funding. So, so when the pharmaceutical companies call me and they say, we don't want to go to bidding, little thing like bidding. We don't want to bid. We want to just sell you whatever it is. We don't want to have bidding. And all of the other things that I say, I've never seen anything like the way this country is run. We're going to start bidding, including for military equipment. We're going to make our military bigger, better, stronger than ever before. But a lot of the equipment we get in the military, it's not the equipment the generals want. It's equipment that we're getting, and you see it all the time, you read about it all the time. It's forced down their throat by a company that's politically good, but doesn't make the equipment that's as good. All of that stuff ends. All of it ends. And this is why they don't, you know, they'd much rather have somebody other than Trump. Now, fortunately, Cruz is so hated. He's got such a rotten personality that they can't stand this guy. And by the way, remember this. He'll never be able to make a deal. He doesn't get along with anybody. The United States Senate, all these senators, he's got practically nobody that's endorsed him. And the one he respects the most is Senator Jeff Sessions from Alabama. He's an amazing guy. He endorsed Trump. So, you know, it's one of those things. We have, we have great endorsements. You know, we have endorsements on the border. We have endorsements on the economy. Carl Icahn, the great businessman. Many of the great businessmen. Because we know what to do, and I know what to do. And when you get to Indiana, it's about jobs, and it's about the economy almost more than anything else. And nobody can compete 
on the economy like I, I mean, Hillary, Hillary is totally bought off by, you take a look at her super PAC. You take a look, you take a look at the people that are giving Hillary Clinton the money. Believe me, this country has no chance. It's never going to be great again. Also, she is crooked Hillary, but she doesn't have the strength or the energy to make our country great again. Believe me. Believe me. You ever notice she'll go, she'll make a speech, she'll read it off a teleprompter. She'll read the speech off a teleprompter, and then she'll leave. You don't hear from her for like four days. When the Chinese traders come in, and they come in 20 at a time, they come in all the way. But when the Chinese come in, and they want to make great trade deals, and they make the best trade deals, and not anymore. When I'm there, we turn it around, folks. We turn it around. We have a $500 billion deficit, trade deficit with China. We're going to turn it around, and we have the cards. Don't forget, we're like the piggy bank that's being robbed. We have the cards. We have a lot of power with China. When China doesn't want to fix the problem in North Korea, we say, sorry, folks, you got to fix the problem. Because we can't continue to allow China to rape our country, and that's what they're doing. It's the greatest theft in the history of the world. What China has done, and I like China. I've made a lot of money with China. The Bank of America building in San Francisco, a building in New York, 1290 Avenue of the Americas, one of the biggest floor plates in the whole city of New York. I do great with China. I sell them condos. I have the largest bank in the world from China, the largest in the world by far. They're a tenant of mine in a building I own in Manhattan. I mean, China's great, no problem. I'm not angry with China, and I'm not angry at Japan, and I'm not angry at Mexico. I'm not angry with anybody. I'm angry at our leaders because they're grossly incompetent and they shouldn't have ever been elected to do this job. <laughs> Terrible. So we have Cruz and we have Kasich or whoever he is. And, and here's the star. Here's the star. Heidi Cruz, nice woman, said, my husband, you heard about this, right? Said this morning, my husband's an immigrant, right? Is an immigrant. And that's what I've been saying. Except a lot of people, I think she was trying to say, she was trying to put the uh, little bit of a Latin turn on it. He was born in Canada, folks. He was born in Canada. One thing I tell you, number one, he's got, he can't win. Got no path to win. And even if he had a path to win, which he doesn't, he has very few votes and he has very few delegates. But I've been saying he wasn't born in this country. And the first thing the Democrats would do, assuming he won, which he won't, so it doesn't matter, I'm not even playing that card, is they will bring a lawsuit against him saying that he's not a naturalized citizen, that he wasn't born on the land. He was born in Canada, lived there for four years. There's a whole big thing. I've had the biggest, the best lawyers of the world tell me, can't, can't run. Now, the Democrats are sitting back with one of the best lawyers of the world. If Cruz ever got lucky, and he can't, but if he ever got lucky and got the nomination, he will be sued immediately. He won't be allowed to run. So lots of luck. Other, other than that, isn't he wonderful? He's wonderful, okay? So we'll see what happens. But his, uh, his wife just said, my husband is an immigrant. And I said, when I heard it, that's what I've been saying. But we don't want to get her. And, and most, very importantly, like Turnberry in Scotland and Doral in Miami and, and great buildings all over the place. And I'm not saying it for any other reason other than that is the kind of thinking we need at least for a period of time to straighten out our country. We have to make our country rich again. And then we're going to make our country great again. And then we're going to make our country greater than ever before. I will tell you, and that's going to happen. So, so I came down the escalator with Melania. Oh, we'll build the wall. Don't worry about it. Build the wall. We'll build the wall. Do you ever notice, you know, when I was on the debate stage recently, they, the, these guys that I'm against, you know what's funny? I watched this guy, Lindsey Graham. Now, I won't say anybody's stupid, because I don't like to call people stupid. So I will not call Lindsey Graham stupid, okay? <laughs> One of the things he's been saying, I've been fighting this war for many years, and I've been giving them ideas for many years. They're the wrong ideas, folks. That's why he's been fighting for so many years. I want to knock it off fast, like, boom, over. 
I mean, he said, you go here, and then you go here, and then you fight Syria and ISIS, and even though they're fighting each other, we're going to fight them both. I mean, this guy doesn't know what the hell he's doing. But here's, here's what I love. So he went out, and he's a senator from South Carolina, and I was at 38. This is a long time ago. I was at 38 percent. He was at two. He's the sitting senator, right? And we crushed him. Then he goes and supports somebody else. That didn't work. Somebody else? That didn't work. Then he supported Jeb Bush. Now, low, low energy, very low. And honestly, I have to be honest. No, no. I love everybody that I defeat. I love it. Now, we started off with 17 people. And week after week, gone, gone, gone. Walker is gone. You know, Walker was going to be great, right? Jeb Bush was going to be great. Everybody was going to be great. The only people that thought I was going to be great are the people that knew me, okay? And people that competed with me in business. I had a lot of very smart people. They called me up, and my wife and my daughter, Ivanka, said, you're going to be great. And my wife said, you know you're going to win, don't you? And she meant it, because she sees I have a relationship with people. But the only people that said I'm going to be great are the people that I've competed against, and friends of mine that know that's the way it is. So I go out, I mean, I watch these moron pundits. I mean, how Fox and CNN and MS pay these people. They are morons. Karl Rove is one of the dumbest human beings I've ever watched. I'm telling you. One of the dumbest. He is one of the dumbest human beings. I win, I win New York by a landslide. Record win. Almost 62%. I win every single county, every single location. I then go next week, I win Pennsylvania. I think they have like 68 counties, right? I win 68 counties, it's never been done before. I win Maryland, Connecticut, Delaware, and Rhode Island, right? Right. And Carl Rove is on television. Uh, Carl Rove, well, uh, he could have done better. Uh, 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 uh. He's choking. You know, the guy's choking. And I win Florida. I win Florida in a landslide. 67 counties. I win 66 in Florida. And then he said, well, you know, you know, the great one, I had one where I was, I won with 32%. But I had 11 people running. You know, don't, don't forget, in the history of politics in this country, there's never been anything where you had 17 people running. So when I get 50%, and now I'm getting 60 and 70%. Now I'm doing great. But, and I have three. It's very hard to get over 50 when you have three. But I've had, when we started with New Hampshire and Nevada and all of the earlier states, South Carolina and North Carolina, we had many, many people. So I'd get 32%. And this dumb guy, Rove, who how Fox pays this guy, maybe he does it for nothing. If I were Roger Ailes, I wouldn't give Carl Rove 10 cents. He's been wrong on everything. He still thinks that Romney won. He's going around going, I thought Mitt Romney won. <laughs> this is a, uh, honestly, this is a dumb guy. So what happens, I get, I get 32% and we have all these people running. And he goes, he didn't break 50. Just remember, when you have many people and you get like 30, that's like better than what I did in New York where I got 62%, but even there, I had three people. Three people's a lot. Now, Hillary, crooked Hillary, she's running against one guy. And she has from the beginning. She's I mean, you had the two guys, but let's call it you're running against one guy. The two guys that dropped out quickly. But she's running against one guy, Bernie. And Bernie, can you believe it? And Bernie, no, but how about Bernie? He came up with a statement and they went crazy. He said, number one, Hillary Clinton, crooked Hillary, is not qualified to run for president. And then they said, what do you mean by that? He said, the reason she's not is that she suffered bad judgment, which she does. She's got bad judgment. It will be a mess. You're going to have the same problems that you had. And by the way, Bill Clinton signed NAFTA, the single worst trading deal made in the history of the world. NAFTA. I went to New England. It was stripped of its business. I went all over. You go upstate New York, and this was years ago, and they've never recovered. They never will recover unless I'm elected. Believe me, they're going to recover much faster than they understand. And you are too in Fort Wayne. And Indiana's going to recover. So, so what happened is on June 16th, I said, I'm going to run. 
because I cannot stand to see what's happening to our country. I love this country. I love this country. I didn't need this, folks. As much as I love Fort Wayne, I could be someplace else right now relaxing and doing something. But honestly, I couldn't stand seeing. And just like your great people, no matter where I go in this country, they're unbelievable people. We shouldn't be in this position. Do you know, middle income, I love you too, darling. Oh, look at I love you too, darling. Thank you. But you know, middle income people are making less money today in real dollars by far than they made 18 years ago. Okay? They're working harder. In many cases, they have two jobs and they're doing worse. It's supposed to be the opposite. Now, I'm working harder than I worked 18 years ago, too. I'll be honest with you. I'm doing this, I'm doing the other stuff. But, you know, fortunately, I have three, three older kids, older kids that are doing a good job, and I have executives that do a good job. I can, they can run the company because I want to focus on this. This is so important, what we're doing. You know, Time Magazine, many covers over the last four months. They call it a movement, and good covers, really good covers. And I'm the messenger, and all I am is the messenger, believe me. I'm a good messenger, I got to say, but I'm the messenger. And the messenger is basically saying, we want to be the smart country again. We don't want every country that does business with us to take, take us over. You know, in, in Indiana, you have a horrible thing that I've used for months. And nobody else brought it up until the last couple of days. I heard the lion Ted was going about carrier, carrier, carrier. The guy never even heard of carrier. I bought air conditioners from them thousands, you know, over the years. But I see now they're all into the carrier. But I've been talking about it for four months since I saw the clip of the mid-level management guy in a rather vicious manner firing 1,400 people because they're going to move to Mexico, right? No, it's terrible. And I've been talking about Indiana, and I didn't do it for this. It just happened to be. It's like when Coach Knight, he called. I said, Coach, thank you. I'll let you know. And then all of a sudden, I realized I'm in Indiana. Coach Knight called me. And I said to a friend of mine, how are we doing in the net? He said, pretty well. By the way, we have got great polls today. Don't worry about them. Don't listen to them. Forget it. Pretend we're losing. We're not. We're winning big. But pretend we're losing because we have to win big. The more we win by, the better it is. But Coach Knight, so I said to a friend, who would be the best endorsement I could get? It took him about 12 one hundredths of a second. I said, who would be the best? He said, well, Bobby Knight, if you could get him. I said, you know. One year ago, he called me, and he really told me I should run. That was before I decided to run. Let me see if I can find his number. I go, where's his, there it is. I call him. He didn't even know who it was. He might have seen Trump or something on the phone. He didn't even know. He goes, I've been waiting for you to call. <laughs> Unbelievable. That was two weeks ago. I said, coach, could you come in? I said, is the endorsement still good? He said, absolutely. He said, you're the only man going to straighten out this country. He said, absolutely. I said, coach, could you come in? Yeah, right? Amazing. Great guy. He is, he is a great guy. You know what I love about him? First of all, remember this. He's tough. Everyone knows. He's really smart. Okay, just so you know. You know, I know a lot of tough guys that are not smart. I know plenty of smart guys that are not tough. I mean, we have all combinations, right? But Bobby Knight is really smart. Everybody knows the toughness, but he's really smart. And you don't do, you know, he won 900 games. He won three championships for Indiana. He won the Pan Am Games. He won the Olympics. He had the, he is the last one to have an undefeated season. And he almost had two of them in a row. I mean, the guy, you know, bottom line, he's a winner. And we don't win anymore as a country. We don't win anymore. We don't win with trade. We don't win with military. We can't beat ISIS. We don't win anymore. So we're going to start winning. And we're going to do not what's politically correct. That is a disastrous term. Political correctness. We, we're going to put America first, okay? We want America to be first. You ever see these deals we make? We're more concerned about other countries than we are about ourselves. We're gonna, and in the meantime, we have all these people laid off all over the place. I mean, I went to New York State, Syracuse, Poughkeepsie, Albany, Rome, but the real Rome, the Rome that's in New York State, not the other Rome. Rome, New York State. I went to these places. I went to the island. I went to Bethpage and so many other places. And, you know, Suffolk County. 
It is so sad to see all those. I mean, I'm driving from I knew it anyway because I've lived there, but I'm driving all the way. I'm driving to different venues and I see factory after factory after factory closed. And the people of and the real estate's worthless. It's all worthless. I say maybe I could buy some of this real estate. It's worthless. It doesn't help. We got to change it. We can't let these other countries manipulate their currencies. They're devaluing their currencies. They're making it impossible for our countries. We can't. Our companies cannot compete. And we make better product. Now we talk about free trade. I'm a free trader. But our leaders don't give us a chance. They make such bad deals that you can't be. Free trade is great for every country other than ours. So now I'm just a smart trader. And what we're going to do, take as an example, you could take Nabisco Ford, you could take hundreds of, but let's use Carrier. So they're going to leave Indiana. They're going to move to Mexico. They're going to make their air conditioners. They're going to sell them across here, probably for the same price. Maybe they'll charge more money. Who knows? And you know what? Not going to happen. I'm going to tell them if I become president through an intermediary, although I'd like to do it myself. It's so much fun. I love doing this stuff. My wife says presidential. I said, look, I love doing this. And who can do it better than me? Right. But I have guys. I have guys. I have so many guys. We have people. People don't realize we have the greatest business people in the world. They're not used. We use political hacks. We use people that aren't even smart to negotiate with China the biggest deals in the world. You know, those trade deals are much bigger than companies. They're much company. There's no company deal that's as big as some of these trade deals. So we use politically induced people, people that gave money to get their job, people that just want to do it, people that probably have bad interests when they negotiate. But we use political hacks against China. Now, I know a lot about China. I've made a lot of money dealing with China. You can check it. You can look at the buildings I have. I did a lot of good deals with China. And again, nothing against China, Mexico, Japan, Vietnam is hot as a pistol now. All of these countries, it's just our people. So here's what we do. I call, meaning I, meaning I, my people, who knows? I'll do it any way you want. I couldn't care less. I'm not proud. We call up. We say, if you leave Indiana, and you can do it now. You really have time. They haven't left yet. You leave Indiana. Every product that you make that comes across that border is going to be taxed at 35 percent. Do it now. No, no, you do it now. I'm just thinking first time I said it, do it now before they leave. They're not leaving. Now, all of a sudden, that bottom line's not looking so good. Now, here's what some people will say. Some people will say, well, the products are going to be more expensive that come into the country. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I don't think they would be. They'd be the same price probably. But forget that. Even if they were, here's the difference. And they never report it. I say, make sure you're because obviously some of this product will be more expensive. But here's the difference. We're going to have our jobs. So when you add the jobs plus a more expense, I like that better than just having cheap crap coming in all the time. Right. I like it better. So we're going to have our jobs and we're going to make our own product and we're going to sell that product also. And we're not going to let China and all these countries continue to devalue their currency. You look at what Japan does to Caterpillar Tractor. You look at what these countries are doing to our country, our, our companies. Now, I have friends who are in the manufacturing business, great, great manufacturers. They can't get their product into China. You can't get it in. And when you do, they tax you. Everything that we hear, oh, we're the bad ones. We're talking about taxing. You can't get your product into China without them charging you a tariff or a tax. But us, we let it just flow in. Then they devalue. Now, they weren't supposed to devalue. But about nine months ago, they did the biggest devaluation that they've done in two decades. They're making it impossible for our companies to compete and we can't allow it to happen. And we're going to have to start charging. And if they don't help us in North Korea, which they can solve in two minutes, who the hell wants to drop bombs on North Korea? If they don't help us on North Korea, they have total control over North Korea. Remember what I said. Now, they don't say that. Well, they're difficult. They're tweaking us. They love they love what's happening. They have total and absolute control.
because everything, that's like the bloodlines coming into North Korea. China, because of its massiveness and its power, they have total control of North Korea. They could solve that problem with one phone call. But they don't do that because they love what we're going through. And we're protecting Japan, a lot of people don't know that, for peanuts. And we're protecting Germany. These are economic behemoths for peanuts. So if something happens to Japan, if Japan is attacked, we have World War III and we're right in the middle of it. Now, here's the deal. If we're attacked, Japan doesn't have to do anything. Good deal. So that if we get attacked, and I like Japan. I have a lot of friends in Japan. I'm not blaming Japan. They make good deals. But if we get attacked, Japan can watch it on Sony televisions, right? Right? But if somebody attacks Japan, let's go in, folks. Guess what? It's World War III. You think that's right? Really? Now, here's the other thing. And I learned a lot of this stuff over the last year and a half, two years, to be honest with you. You know, they asked me the other day, Wolf Blitzer on CNN said, Mr. Trump, what do you think of NATO? I said two things. I said it's obsolete because it was set up for the Soviet Union. And right now we have a problem with terror. And I'm not saying that Putin and all of what's happening in Russia is great, but it's obsolete. And I said, economically, we're paying for far too much. And the next day, people that study it, they said, Trump is wrong. And then two days, three days later, now they're all saying, I'm like a genius. Like Putin said, Trump is a genius. I like that. Not going to get him anything, but I was still not. You know what these characters on the stage? We want you to disavow. They wanted me to call Putin or write to Putin and say, please never call me a genius again. There's no way that's ever going to happen. These are people. You know what they said? They called me after one of the debates. One of the guys. Nice guy. Nice guy. And I never hit back. Remember, I'm a counterpuncher. Like when Jeb Bush, I just hit him. I said he's a low energy stiff. I wouldn't have hit back, except that I'm watching television the other day, and he's being interviewed, and he's saying all sorts of stuff. He's saying Trump is not a conservative. Who cares? I'm a conservative, but who cares? I'm smart. We're going we're to make great trade deals for ourselves. You know, they want these conservatives, you know, these morons that write the magazines, National Review that nobody reads. They write the magazines, and they want it to be free trade. But they don't understand. It's not working. It's killing us. Free trade is killing us. Globalization is killing us. Because everybody's making good deals but us. They're sucking our blood out of our system. They're sucking our blood. So we've got, so I watched Jeb and he was nasty, you know, saying bad things. He's like bad things. I say, what? Hey, the race is over. And you know what? When they lose, I've been very nice to many of the people. But when they lose, you're supposed to be like a nice person. And he's not. So that's why I say that. That's why I say that stuff. Because, frankly, we got to all team up together. You know, the Republican Party has to come together, folks. And if it doesn't come together, it's going to be hard. But I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. They said to me, well, if it doesn't come together, does that mean you can't win? No, I think I can win. What? Do you think it helps to have Jeb Bush? What's that worth? Like two votes? Jeb and his wife. Jeb and his wife. Seriously. I don't think it matters. But it would be nice to have the Republican Party come together. With that being said, I think I'll win anyway. I think I'll win New York State. I think I'll win Michigan. I think I'll win states that nobody ever won before as a Republican for many years. It's like, you know, lately they're, call they're all calling up. All these guys that have been brutal. You know, they're on television saying the worst things about me. Now they're calling, they want to come on the train, as they said. We'd love to join the train, the Trump train. And I said to one guy in particular, what he said was so bad about me. He calls me up yesterday. He wants to join. I said, you know, it would be nice to have you, but just out of curiosity, how is it possible for you to do that? He goes, he's a politician. He goes, oh, that's no problem. Don't worry about it. In other words, he'll say, these are politicians, folks. I would find it hard. I even see it where they'll, you'll see this really brutal race. And you have a winner and a loser. And they were horrible, horrible, horrible things said. And the guy that loses gets up. I'd like to congratulate Jim. He's a great man and he'll be a great senator or whatever the hell they're running for. And I say, I wonder how they do that. I mean, I'm not sure. But if I lost, I think I just go, bye bye, folks. Thanks a lot. I love you people. But I'm going the hell out of here. I'm not thanking anybody other than you people. Why should we? You know, why should we? But I'd like to see the party pull together. Now, if it doesn't pull together, I think I'm still going to win. Because, you know, they're voting for me. They're not voting for some character that 
you know, is giving us an endorsement or whatever. They're voting for me. Now, with that being said, I've seen very few endorsements that work. Bobby Knight, I think, is a great endorsement. And there are some other great endorsements. I mean, you know, I've, I've had some incredible endorsements. But it would be still better if the party could pull together. And I think your chances are even better of victory. Because the last thing we need is another four years of Barack Obama, which Hillary Clinton would be giving you. If she's allowed to run. If she's allowed to run. Because I've seen people that did far less than her with her crooked emails. I've seen people that did far less than her. And they have suffered for years and years. And she's being let off the hook by the Democrats. That's not even mentioning Benghazi and all of this. But I'm just talking about the emails. What she gave up in terms of national security, she should be ashamed of herself. And that's bad judgment, and it's also beyond bad judgment. But it's just like Bernie Sanders said about crooked Hillary Clinton. She suffers from bad judgment. And you can't have her be your president. You can't. So, so when I won New Hampshire, that was my first state that I won. I have a special little place. So you ever win something like your first win as a pitcher or whatever? It was my first win. And I got to know a lot of the people up there. I campaigned hard. I wanted to win New Hampshire badly. And everyone said, oh, you can't win New Hampshire. That's going to be Bush. I said, Bush? Bush is going to beat me? I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, I won in a landslide. But I got to know the people during the two weeks that I was up there. I mean, I literally got to know a lot of people. And they all said, I said, what's your biggest problem? And they said, heroin. I said, heroin? You have to see this place. It's gorgeous. The trees, the roads, the lakes. Everything's so beautiful. And I said, what are you talking about heroin? No, it's pouring in. It's pouring into your community. It's pouring into every. It comes out from the southern border. And I said, if I win, I'm going to stop it. And I won New Hampshire. I then had the same talk in South Carolina. We went to Nevada. We won Nevada in a landslide. And by the way, won the Hispanics by a lot. All the Hispanics we won every poll. And then I went to the South. And that was going to be Lion Ted Cruz's territory. And we won the South. We won Alabama. We won Mississippi. We won everything, practically. We won Florida in a landslide. I mean, we're doing great. We're having a lot of fun. More fun to win. Do we agree? More fun. You know, if I was losing all those places, and if I was here, first of all, we wouldn't have this crowd. We'd have three people. But it wouldn't be too much fun, but it's fun to win. But you know why it's fun for me to win? For the end result, not because I want to win like aimlessly. I want to win because I know how great our country can be. I really do. I know how great our country can be. And it's not going to take that long. And it's not going to be that hard. I mean, it's much harder. I've said to a lot of people, it's harder to get into the Wharton School of Finance than it is to stay there. It's harder to get into Harvard than it is to stay there. It's harder to become president, in my opinion, than to do a great job being president. I really mean it. It's hard. I mean, I'm here. I'm all over the place. Tomorrow I have two or three big speeches in Indiana. I'm all over the place. And it's harder get doing this than it is being there and being really smart. And I've got the greatest people. I've got the greatest negotiators. Our military is going to be so great. Our trade is going to be so great. Our veterans are going to be taken so well care of. You know what I love? Because we're a lot of business people. I know some of the people, a lot of great business people. What I love, I've spent the least money by far. And I'm by far number one. Okay? Now, you could take others, I won't mention any more names, but you could take others, like in New Hampshire. I spent just about the least, and I had the best result by far. And every state, I spent the least and I win. And then other guys spend five, six, seven times more money, and they come in last. And I say, who would you rather have as your president, right? I mean, who would you rather have? You spend the least, you spend the least, and you win. And that's what we want. So here's the story, folks. We're going to have very strong borders. We're going to have the wall. I was telling you after one of the debates, I've won every debate. I've been on center stage on every single debate. And suppose I never did this stuff before, but won every debate. And we've been number one almost since I announced, just about a few weeks after. You know, I started off at four, and they all said, 
well, that is his plateau. He won't go higher. The next week I went to eight. Then I went to 12. Then I went to 18. Then I went to 22. And every week these idiots said that would be his plateau. That is the ceiling. He has hit his ceiling. Then I went to 68. Then I went. And believe me, if I didn't have three people running, I'd be at 85. I'd be at 85. So, so this person takes me after the debate. He says, you know, we can't build the wall. One of the early debates. I said, I'm telling you, you can build the wall. Then I heard him a few months ago saying, we will build the wall. They have no chance. Okay. But then recently, one of the guys said, because I will say Mexico is going to pay for the wall, folks. Okay. Mexico is going to. And this guy calls me backstage, and I said it during the debate, he calls me, he says, you know Mexico's never going to pay for the war. I said, absolutely, absolutely. We have a trade deficit with Mexico of 68, $58 billion, right? So when you have $58 billion trade, that doesn't include the drugs that are pouring off, which is much more than that. The drugs are pouring. They are pouring across the border, poisoning our youth and poisoning plenty of other people, too. Poisoning our youth in New Hampshire and other places. We're going to stop it. Okay, so they're pouring across the border, right? So here's what I said. I said, when we have a trade deficit with Mexico of $58 billion, and we have a wall that costs us $10 billion, and we have a wall that we need 1,000 miles because we have natural barriers, and China had 13,000 miles 2,000 years ago, they built the Great Wall of China. You know, these guys think we can't build a wall. I mean, and we have tractors, and we'll only use Caterpillar. We're not using uh, Komatsu, okay? We're not using Komatsu out of Japan. And it's okay to talk like that because, you know, in Japan, and I understand this, they're very proud of their product. They don't want to buy American products. The people, the people, they want to buy products made in Japan because they're proud of their country. And in China, they want to buy products in China. But you can't do business in China very easily. It's very hard for you to send your products in. But they have a pride. Well, we have a pride, too. I want to use products made in the USA, okay? I want to do that. So, so I told them, we're going to build the wall. Mexico is going to pay for the wall. We're going to stop the drugs. And our country that we love is going to start winning again. The key, you got to go on Tuesday. We're having a lot of fun tonight with a bad subject. You know, it's hard to have fun. A very big musician, I won't say who, I'd like the biggest, said Trump's the greatest in the world without a guitar, meaning who the hell else can fill a place like this and I don't have a musical instrument, right? I, uh... He said, he said Trump is the greatest in the world. This guy fills up the stadiums. He doesn't have bands. He doesn't have music. I only have the brain, folks, and the mouth. Because you got to have a little combination between the brain and the mouth. But believe me, they're good. But you have the brain, too. And you have, that's why you're all here. Because you're sick and tired of watching our country lose and watching our. For President Trump, the Trump administration, and you're going to say that was the single greatest vote you've ever cast. Because all of a sudden, we're going to beat Hillary. By the way, the polls are now saying we're even with her and going up. I guess you saw that. I guess you saw that. And these other two guys never had a negative ad. I had 55,000 negative ads. And I'm now beating her or tied. And I haven't even focused on her. Don't forget, 17 people. One, two, three. Every week, boom, boom, boom. Now I can focus on her. Will that be fun? Oh, will that be fun? But look. But the polls are showing now, Rasmussen and another one just came out yesterday that I'm even. I, I don't like even, but even's fine because they had me die. You know, I had 55,000 negative ads during Florida. I said, there's no way I can win. Every ad, I watch television. Every single ad of every show on television was a negative Trump ad. And they're phony ads. They're, fo they're wrong. Mostly yeah, a couple of things that are correct, but that's okay. But they're wrong. And I had 55,000 negative ads, and I won Florida in a landslide. And I won just about everything in a landslide. You know, last week I won five states in a landslide. Everyone was a landslide. I mean, Cruz was getting like 10%. How do you run for president if you get like 12% in New York? 
You can't even think about it. And then the week before that with New York, it was the same thing. So look, we're gonna, you're going to look back and we're going to start winning again. We're going to win with our military. We're going to win on trade. We're going to win at the border. We're going to win with education. We're getting rid of Common Core, bring it local. We're going to win with health care. We're going to win with health care. And you're going to look back, though, and you're going to say that was the greatest vote. And I'll tell you something, folks. I give you my word. Go out and vote. It's so important on Tuesday. Get your friends to vote. You can cross over. You know, here you can cross over. I love it when they cross. Because in New York, they had a big story on it. In New York, you're not allowed. If you're a Democrat, you have to vote Democrat. But they had a big story. The people that work in the polling booths, you know, they've been there for years. Some of them are like 80 years old, and they've done it for 45 years. They said on television, local television, we've never seen anything like it. Everybody that comes in wants to know if they can vote for Trump. That was in New York. They said everybody. And we said no, because you have to vote Democrat. But we're going to have massive crossover. We're going to have massive independent votes. And you know what I see more than anything else? I'm on lines and we sign and we shake hands with people. Every 20th person says to me, Mr. Trump, I mean, these are 40, 50, 60, 70 year old people. They say, Mr. Trump, I've never voted before. You're the first time in my life that I'm voting, and I'm so proud of it. And they'll have the Trump shirt, and have, they're so proud. They said they've never had anybody they wanted to vote for. They, it never meant anything to them because they never had anybody they wanted to vote for. So get out and vote because I'm telling you, we're going to start winning again, winning like we have never won before. We are going to make America greater, greater, greater than ever before. Thank you. Thank you. We will make America great again. Get out and vote. Thank you, Indiana. Thank you. Thank you, Indiana. We love you.